Hey everybody, Adam here. Live from the shop today. What's going on with you guys? It is Friday, St. Patrick's Day, 2023. And as some of you may know, I don't drink. I've been sober for a minute. I do allow myself one drink a year because I'm not, uh, you know, a Puritan, I guess. If I wanted to drink uh, one drink a year, I would allow myself that. But I didn't yet this year, and I didn't last year, and I didn't the year before. I've been sober for a long time, and after this many years of being sober, it's not something that uh, I really care to do. And the risks and um, the effects far, out, far outweigh the uh, momentary enjoyment but I wanted to say hi so here I am at the shop I have a rust checked or a rust proofing booked for today and uh, the customer is scheduled in for 3 p.m. so I mean you tell me if the guy's gonna show up I'm gonna give him a buzz obviously after 3 if he doesn't because it's kind of been raining and a little bit dreary today so we'll see if the guy shows up pardon me so you might wonder to yourself, you know, what does a guy like Adam do uh, when there's no rust checks to do? And uh, you may know, you may not know that uh, I'm an investor. I invest my money. I invest in things. I've learned over the years uh, what works and what doesn't. So I decided to write a book and that's what I've been doing. I've been working on a book. You can follow my book story on adamjosh.com uh, and pre-order the book so that's one thing I do another thing is you know my adopted family uh, got into restaurants I don't have any props ready for this video but uh, this is for example uh, a kitchen tile commercial kitchen tile from the uh, rest one of the restaurants and so I have these here I even have the smaller ones and I always have you know, kitchen tiles ready to go if they need to be replaced because delivery guys, whatnot, they drop stuff on there. So we have six restaurants. Also, this table that I use as a work table. Funny story with that. That table there is actually um, one of the tables from one of our restaurants, but it, it didn't fit. So we kept it in storage for a few years. And then I decided, you know, I could use that for a bench. So you're in my my work area of the shop where I like to keep my keep my stuff that I immediately need and if I need to fix something or work on a motor or something then I, I hang out here. So it keeps me me busy in the off season usually. The thing <laughs> the thing about right now uh this time of March into April. So normally what I do uh personally speaking outside of investing and outside of uh you know doing rust checks during the season is I get to this point where I have have this list of things that have piled up that need to be addressed. So we triage the things that uh, are an emergency, the things that are high priority, and then we go down the list. And finally, at the bottom of the list, usually April, May, June, by that time, we are rust proofing our own vehicles, we're doing tire rotations, we're doing uh, unnecessary repairs at the restaurants that maybe don't need to be done. Previously, in other years, we started building restaurants at this time. We built our first ice cream restaurant that some of you may know down the road there. Uh, and then at the same time, during the coronavirus pandemic, we were building two restaurants at the same time, which was challenging to say the least. So in the off season of rust check, usually I'll get to other things, but um, yeah, also my adopted family has rentals, you know, and this new challenge, you know, my dad is always, my dad is always bringing on new challenges. Recently, he uh, was voted to be the president of the local Islamic society, which comes along with a lot of new, um, I don't want to say drama, but that was the first word I thought of, but it comes along with new responsibility and uh, oversight, executive oversight. I, Drama is the first word that came to my mind, honestly, but that's not really, it, it is, there are some dramatic things that happen, obviously, but it's not an accurate word. So yeah, I stay busy uh, throughout the year and a lot of guys, which I've talked about before, as far as rust proofing goes, a lot of guys 
uh, when the rust proofing work dries up, they just close their shop and go on welfare or go on EI. And I get that. I mean, this is a big shop. I think I've shown the, the shop before. But if, if we were only doing rust proofing, then yes, that would be bad because we have a giant shop here. I got this shop with that. This is our old hoist from uh, the other shop that I had. We had to ship it over here. I've told the story many times. I've been in this shop for about four years. Then I have this other hoist so that when the drive-on hoist doesn't work, I can use the, the two-post or the four-point hoist. So as far as the shop goes, you know, bathroom there, storage here, storage upstairs. Uh, this is a flat roof up there, so there's not like a pitch roof. And then I have... Over here, as some of you saw me build that secret office up there, which is really cool, actually. It's, a really, it's an office on an office. But this is it. Uh, this, it's a pretty big shop and a giant parking lot outside. So to pay for all this stuff, man, if we were just relying on the rust-proofing business or the 300, and, 300 to 400 customers that come through here every year, yeah, that could be a problem. So we have these other side businesses and side hustles and back in 2012 my dad had this genius idea to you know hey adam you like money right well everybody eats we can make money in the restaurant business because people eat every day and that was a great idea in 2012 but now here we are in 2023 and sometimes you think like was the restaurant business the greatest to get into? Uh, because the pandemic definitely brought out the worst in, uh, in, that, in that industry. Although, uh, saying all that, food businesses were considered an essential service. So, Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an update. It's kind of my day today on um, St. Patrick's Day. I don't drink, so I'm not going to be boozing. You guys can have one for me. And uh, to answer your questions about what Adam does in the off season, ideally, you know, ideally I would uh, do nothing. That's uh, honestly, I would just love to uh, kick up my feet and do nothing and uh, still be independently wealthy. <laughs> That's the goal. So I don't want or have to do anything. So I've triaged, by the way, that list of things at the six restaurants that we have I've triaged all the things that needed to be done. And guess what? Your boy already did it. You can follow me on Twitter at AdamJosh.com and check out hashtag restaurant one, hashtag restaurant two, hashtag restaurant three, hashtag restaurant four, hashtag restaurant five, hashtag restaurant six. So it's not like, it's not like I do nothing. It's that we do a lot, but we do it really well and efficiently. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, if we only did rust proofing business and that was our only source of income, then I, we would, honestly, we would be struggling. But all the stuff that you see around you, the boxes and the, uh, the odds and ends here are because of the other businesses usually and stuff that I have to keep handy um, for when the time comes. I've got my little Makita compressor down there. But yeah, um, other, other options that you might think of, other options that you might think of it, are to, if you were to use this shop I've heard believe me I've heard these all these uh, ideas over the years oh if I had that shop I would uh, have a mechanic shop in there and I would I would do mechanical work I bet you would uh, but here in Niagara uh, I'll tell you right off the top um, are you going to be doing the mechanical work yourself because if you're not then you're going to have to uh, hire somebody or work out a deal with somebody who wants to rent the unit from you and then that comes along with a whole bunch of other things. Least of all, which is, um, you know, I still want to do the rust proofing in here. So we're going to have a rust proofing shop here. Are, are you comfortable with all your stuff being covered with rust check <laughs> for six, seven months of the year? Most people aren't. So when you get into the nitty gritty and actually hashing out the details with people as far as having a mechanic shop in here, people realize really quickly like, oh, you, you don't want to do your rust check thing outside or on the side? No. And we own the shop, so why would I have to? I want to do the rust check thing in the main bay because it's our shop. And that's what we bought it for. <laughs> we want to do that. So we don't want to be off, pushed off to the side. And you can't pay me enough money to take over my entire shop. Trust me, you can't afford it. <laughs> so... 
Uh, people have had lots of different ideas. I had an idea to actually tear this whole place down and build a restaurant out of it, but then obviously, where would we get a rust check from? It's like, you gotta get out of it. Uh, and we've been in uh, rust check business since 2012, and here we are 11 years later, so believe me, all the opportunities and ups and downs over the years, it's not like we haven't thought, maybe we should do something else. But, and I'm here to serve the customers, and I've been here to serve the customers, and when I'm not here to serve the customers, then we train somebody else to take over. And, uh, but, you know, everybody loves Adam. Everybody, everybody's used to seeing Adam. You know, they look up the YouTube videos online, the rust proofing playlist, they look up my comments on the internet, and they're like, we want Adam. And I get it. <laughs> if I was to go get my own vehicles rust checked by somebody who wasn't me, I would be watching them like a hawk, or I would be like, where's Adam? <laughs> just one of those things. I've been in the auto industry since I was 16, you know? Like you can't fake that year, those years of experience. I'm 41 now. So I tried over the years to train guys to like be at my level. But it's tough, you know? At the end of the day, people don't a lot of people don't see the um, the vehicles as I do. Like the, the your vehicle is the second largest investment that you'll ever make generally speaking. So I know that, you know that because we're vehicle owners. You know, I own my own vehicles. I don't lease them. I don't rent them. I own them. So I understand that, hey, I want that to last as long as possible. I own my house. You know, I own my cars. So I get it. And a lot of my customers are on the same mentality, same wavelength that I'm on, or, or they're retired. So I get it. Trying to teach that to younger kids is tough. So I've tried over the years. And uh, I mean, at the same time, if, you, if you're looking to get trained, if you are looking to get into this industry, I'm here, I'm approachable, we can talk. Yeah, but uh, if you wanna just do rust proofing as, as your main business in Niagara, I don't think that's a great idea. Unless you're a one man operation. And then I would ask you what you're gonna do in the off season. <laughs> but anyway, to update everybody, that's kinda what I'm up to today. And uh, yeah, I hope that you have a good St. Patrick's Day and a good weekend. Take care, thanks for hanging out with me, bye bye.